Another year, another what's in the bag. Let's see what I've got for my 2022 setup for this golf season. Hey guys, Tyson with Golf Sending. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Brady and I upload golf content every week. But let's go ahead and hop into the bag for 2022. So some new changes, some familiar faces, um, but let's go ahead and start from the top. You guys might remember this guy. This is the Ping G400. So a uh, quick little story if you guys are new to the channel. Um, I actually originally had this driver. Um, played around, uh, or I guess played all season with it, but then looked at it after one round and the hosel had cracked. So I sent it in the ping, um, they ended up replacing it with the new, I guess at the time, the G410. Didn't love the sound, ended up switching to a different driver and I just, I was like, you know what? I really miss that G400. So we got it back in the bag. I'm actually playing this with the Fujikura Speeder um, this is the 757. This was actually fit to me by our club fitter buddy Brian Metzler at the Claret Club. Um, shout out to him. But uh, I love this club. Um, you know, it for some reason like it. It sounds right to me with you know to my ears. It looks really good at a dress, and I just hit the ball really well with it. So I'm looking forward to having this in the 2022 bag. Hopefully, it does not break um, because I really like this thing. So. That's the driver. Uh, moving on, got fairy woods. We got a two fairy wood setup. Um, we got a three wood and a seven wood in the Cobra King F8. Um, this is the same. Uh, this has been the same for a couple years now. Um, and I really just can't go wrong with it. I mean, the sound is fantastic. It makes like a crack type of a sound. Um, I love just the all black look. Um, and these actually also fit to me this year by Brian. Um, I've got the Tour AD um, Graphite Design MT8S. Um, so it's actually a pretty heavy shaft. Um, when I first picked it up, I was like, oh my gosh, like a piece of rebar. But, you know, as I started swinging with it, it just felt super stable and I really like, um, you know, how I can play shots now. So um, I have the three wood that I usually hit off of the T. Um, don't really hit that one much off the turf, um, you know, where me and Brady play, it's not like worth it risk reward wise to go three wood off the deck just because there is fescue everywhere. And so, um, you know, getting it up in the air and, you know, keeping that dispersion tight, um, I would rather go with the seven wood. Um, I can get this thing up in the air. It sits really nice. Um, one thing that, you know, I mentioned last year with this club. I mean, why I like it so much is the trajectory is just awesome. Um, if you haven't hit a seven wood, definitely try it. But this is a club, I mean, it's essentially, you know, a, a three iron uh, loft, two iron loft, and you can get it looking like a nine iron, just shooting up into the air and get it to sit on greens. Um, it's nice too for those longer par threes, you know, maybe those ones sitting at maybe 225, 230. I could pull this out um, and you know have a nice soft landing shot to a green. So super happy with the King F8 fairy woods. Um, don't see these going anywhere anytime soon. Um, another familiar face um, is the Titleist 718 CBs. Um, I had these also last year. They weren't fit for me shafts wise. They were in the just um, off the rack S300, um, I think AMT whites. Um, Brian fit me into these. Um, we actually have a video on that, so you can check it out. Um, but these are in the KBS C Taper 130X. Um, kind of crazy story, um, and you guys can see this in the fitting, but I did not think I was gonna be anywhere near this. This is actually probably one of the heaviest, stiffest shafts out there, and I love them. Um, you know, the fitting really does work. Um, you know, I'm hitting the ball straighter, actually, you know, able to hit more draws and, you know, controlling fades a lot better with these, but these are amazing clubs. Um, I got a pretty sweet ferrule on all these. It's got the uh, gold and the purple, along with the, kind of the matching grip, grip here, uh, the uh, Golf Pride uh, 
what is this? this is the MCC plus four teams edition so standard size here but yeah really like these clubs I play this from four iron down to pitching wedge um, but yeah really love these clubs um, looking forward to playing them again in 2022 all right, uh, one thing that I wanted to note, um, if you guys watched my What's in the Bag from the previous year, you guys will have known that I had a two iron in the bag. Um, and as much as I loved that two iron and hitting the low kind of stinger off the tee, the low wind ball, um, I just found that I could essentially do what I wanted um, with the four iron, what I could with that two iron. Um, I really only use it off the tee. I never really hit it off of the deck. It was just kind of that safety club. And, you know, kind of the note with that is my safety club actually has been the three wood off the tee. I hit this thing as straight as an arrow, um, hit it really long, um, and I'm actually working on flighting the seven wood off the tee. So if I do need to go a little bit shorter, um, I'm working on trying to get it just a little bit lower, not so up to the moon um, like it traditionally goes. All right, so moving on to my wedges, I play a 50, 54, at 60 degree setup. Um, but in the 50 and 54, um, it is a little bit different than the 60 degree, um, but I am playing the new level golf wedges. Um, these are the T-type. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, the 50 and the 54. Um, and these are actually prototypes. Um, these have not been released as of now um, to the public. Um, I was actually able to find a pretty good discount for just the heads and in my garage I built them up and you know have the, the C taper um, 130X shaft in there. Um, but they play pretty good. Um, they actually remind me a lot of a Vokey um, sound and feeling wise. Um, and even the spin, it all, you know, it all looks very similar to that. But um, pretty good wedges so far. Um, you know, we'll see if these guys stay in the bag. I am constantly thinking about my old wedges, the Ping Glide Forged. Um, those literally were the softest, spinniest, best feeling wedges that I've ever had. The reason why they are not in the bag is they are the wrong loft. They were 52, um, 56, and so I needed something a little bit stronger at the bottom. So these may be a placeholder. I don't know. We'll see down the road. Um, I have my eye on the new Glide Forged Pros, um, but we'll see. But anyways, really like the new levels. Um, it's cool. I did um, add a matching red, black, and silver ferrule to them. Um, but yeah. Um, not a bad wedge. Um, definitely check them out if uh, when they come out. Moving on uh, to the 60 degree. So this is uh, this is actually one of the reasons why I decided to forego the two iron at the top of the bag. Is I felt like I was missing. I felt like I was missing a club as far as not necessarily like a full swing shot, but like a three quarter shot. And so that's kind of why I've got that 50 54 setup. Um, and I just, I realized how much I needed a high lofted club. Um, so really the 60 degree, I don't swing this full at all. This is literally just a touchy club around the greens. Um, I will never hit this club um, full. But anyways, this 60 degree is the Callaway uh, PM Grind is the 2019 edition. I think it's the last um, year they did these, um, but it is that full face. Um, I actually, I call this wedge my spoon wedge just because it's so big. And then behind the ball, it looks ginormous. <laughs> so if you're ever in a situation where you have kind of one of those touchy feely shots, um, it's nice to kind of have that confidence of the huge face behind it, knowing that, okay, I'm gonna get some sort of club on it. Um, you know, and, and with these high grooves up to the toe, um, it really sits and looks super open. So it, it feels like, you know, before I even put the swing on it, it feels like it's just gonna pop it right up. So um, I really enjoyed the, the high toe groove. Um, really like this club a lot. So, um, but yeah, this has just kind of been my surgical scalpel, um, like me and Brady have mentioned before in, uh, in another video. But I have the uh, matching uh, green and yellow ferrule on there that I built with the matching Golf Pride. Um, was the MCC Plus 4. So, um, really like this club. <clears throat> All right, and last but not least, you guys know that I am a big Bettinardi fan. I got, you know, the pullover here. I've got, I, I wear Bettinardi stuff all the time. Um, had previously was playing with the Studio Stock 8. Um, still have that club, but I, I made a big upgrade. This is a BB0 
um, and this is actually from the hive. So this is a one of one putter. Um, it's got the wizard on the bottom um, with a fly mill face. I'm actually playing this at 34 and a half inches. Um, got a nice black shaft on here and I've actually got the Garson Quad Tour grip. So you guys may be surprised that you're not seeing the Kotahi grip on here. Uh, Brady and I are actually testing these out and I've got really good things to say about this grip. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, putting has become honestly one of my favorite things about golf. Um, you know, and being able to kind of, you know, show off my cool putter um, and have that confidence as I take it out of the bag definitely helps, you know, as I line up over the ball. So, um, so yeah, Bettinardi BB0, um, you know, the equivalent to this club, if you guys, obviously, if, you know, a lot of you aren't going to go out there and buy a hive putter that's a one of one, but a very similar putter to this would be the BB1. Um, and uh, Betnari did just release their 2022 series um, out there. So it is very similar to this putter if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, um, that is my favorite club in the bag and that wraps everything up. Um, I have a ton of stuff in the bag I kind of want to take you guys through. Um, so let's hop over there and I can run through what I've gotten inside. Hopping over to inside the bag. So the reason why I do this part of the video is it's always nice to be prepared when you're out on the golf course and you know sometimes you don't always know what to bring with you aside from you know your golf clubs and yourself to the the golf course so i'm um, gonna show you guys what i've got here um leave me a comment down below if you know you guys bring something with you that you really like having that i'm missing here so anyways getting right into it um just want to start off with my head covers <laughs> Um, we'll show you guys a better look of these, but I am a big Bettinardi fan, as you guys probably could tell. And so I've got my suite set up of Bettinardi head covers. Um, got to make sure that I'm protecting those woods, the driver and the putter, um, most definitely. Um, it, so you don't get that bag chatter. Um, something else on the bag, um, that you gotta have, um, for sure is a towel. So this is, a, this is actually a Primo towel. Um, we actually are have an affiliate with these guys. Um, they do sweet joggers um, and we got a 20% um, code. So be sure to check those guys out. I mean, they're seriously like the most comfortable pants in the world. But anyways, golf towel, gotta have one. Um, next up, um, gloves. You know, it's good to have one glove, but make sure you've got multiple just in case one rips. Um, this one is actually called Invictus. Um, we have a code on these guys too. We'll drop it down below. Um, but pretty sweet glove. Um, review coming shortly. Uh, one thing I failed to mention with the equipment, I guess, is the ball that I play. So currently I'm playing the uh, Bridgestone Tour B XS. Um, if you guys followed my last What's in the Bag, I was playing the Callaway Chrome Soft and I just kind of grew apart from that ball just because it was so soft. Um, for some reason, I just didn't like how soft it was. I wanted a little bit of, I want to say like a clickiness um, coming back as far as feedback goes. So currently using the Bridgestone um, Tour BXS. Um, something else to carry on the bag. This is actually kind of a cool thing. I actually didn't know it existed. Um, but this is a putting disc. Um, so this is a Bettinardi one, but it's just this little rubber circle thing. It's actually the exact width of a hole. Um, what's really cool about this is if you ever go um, play a golf scramble um, and the putting green is just packed and everybody's putting at the same hole, you could actually, um, you know, take it off this carabiner here um, and you could toss it on the green somewhere and just um, aim toward, you know, the putting disc because this is, you know, the same look as what a hole on the golf course would be. So anyways, really like that. Um, definitely a cool thing to have on the bag. Um, I carry a couple Sharpies on the bag just to make sure I mark my ball. Um, it's always good to have. Um, Brady and I do obviously our filming. So I've got a um, solar charger that goes on the bag. So in case anything is running low on battery, um, just plug it into this guy and uh, actually charges back up pretty well. I do have... Um, I have this valuables pouch. Um, what it actually is, is it's essentially it's a divider in my bag um, and it holds my golf tees. Golf tees and a wrench. And the reason why I have it in this bag is because I don't like when like the golf tees and the wrench are just kind of like 
in with everything else and it's not organized. So it's nice to be able to compartmentalize, um, you know, your stuff and, you know, it has a, a specific spot for it. So that's what this is. Um, got an assortment of um, markers, divot tools. Um, this one's kind of cool. Um, the guys, uh, I think this one's called like Timber Golf. It's got like a little carabiner, um, a little brush. But anyways, um, I, I keep these in the bag just because, um, you know, I'll, I'll actually throw it in my pocket and then sometimes at, after a round I'll forget that it's there. And so it's nice to have extra in your bag. So I've got multiple markers and, and divot tools. So this right here is a, it's basically just like a camera kit. We've got like a handheld um, tripod um, with a microphone. So this is called the Shure microphone kit. So um, carry this with me along with a couple other tripods. As you guys can see here, we've got uh, this guy. It's a little bendy one that we can put in different places as well as we got the, uh, the big one here that I also stick in the bag. So uh, a couple of tripods good to have on the course um, rangefinder guys I can't tell you uh, how important it is to have a rangefinder especially if your golf cart does not have the little um, screen that's telling you distances because if you are hitting blind into a hole and you don't know what the distance is you are doing yourself a disfavor so this is the uh, the blue tees s3 um, pro slope I believe um, Pretty good rangefinder. Um, we'll throw a link for blue tees. Um, these guys have been pretty good for us. Um, so moving on, uh, this is kind of like the medical section. So I honestly would say this is like the most important thing in my golf bag aside from equipment is ibuprofen. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had a headache or I just completely murdered my wrist on just, you know, hitting a chunky shot and having a painkiller in the bag uh, to be able to kind of supplement that pain, you know, for 18 holes um, is really a big help. So um, ibuprofen is a must. Um, in this little baggie here, um, I've, what I've got here is I've got some band-aids um, and I have some athletic tape. Um, so I actually have this like small roll here. What I did was I actually cut a normal athletic tape just directly in half. The reason why is um, the smaller tape, it's just easier to like tape around like your fingers so you can like bend your fingers um, in different places. So got that along with um, a couple of chapsticks in here. Um, last couple things here. So got a water bottle. Um, this is a squirt water bottle. Um, really like this one. Um, but it's just nice to keep keep yourself hydrated. I, I probably, I also uh, grab other drinks too while I'm there, but it's nice to have a water bottle as well. The last thing that I've got here is the training aid that I'm working with uh, currently. Um, I like to keep this one in the bag. This is the Raindrop by Perfect Practice. Um, if you guys haven't seen the video, make sure to check that out. Um, but basically what it is, is it's just a line, um, like a string that retracts uh, and you can stake it into the ground. And it really just kind of helps you find the pace and the breaks of greens. And so I really like this if you want to go into the round trying to score. Um, but if you guys are interested in this or any other Perfect Practice um, you know, products, we've got a code. Um, I'll throw it in the description down below. Um, I believe it's 15% off. But yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely a really cool uh, training aid. So that's basically it for the stuff that's in my bag that's not clubs. Um, if you guys uh, you know, think that I'm missing anything or you think you've got something that's really cool um, that I should consider putting in my bag, let me know, let me know down in the comments. I um, would love to hear it. And you know, who knows, maybe you know, come the what's in the bag for 2023, it might find my bag. All right, guys, that does it for my what's in the bag for 2022. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, Brady and I upload golf content every week and make sure to drop us down uh, a comment below. Uh, what's your 2022 setup? Um, let us know the goodies you've got in your bag. We'll see you next time.